Everyone who sells a home is wondering the same thing. How much money am I really going to earn after all is said and done? It's an important question, so let's talk a little bit about it. The biggest factor that determines how much money you'll earn is how much someone is willing to pay for your home. Of course, the more money someone's willing to pay, the more the seller will walk away with. But that's not the only factor that determines what you'll earn from the sale of your property. The other big thing to think about is all your expenses. And I include your mortgage in one of those expenses. Whether you have a first mortgage or a second mortgage, you're going to have to pay that off with proceeds from the sale at closing. So if you have a mortgage, that's going to take a big chunk of the, the profits you're going to make from the sale of your property. If you don't have a mortgage, congratulations, you'll get to walk away with the, the lion's share of the proceeds of the sale. However, whether you have a mortgage or not, there are other expenses to think about. If, for example, you have a home equity line of credit and you've drawn money out of that account, you'll have to pay that back before closing or really out of the proceeds from the sale of your home. Anyone you owe money to could be a lien on, on your property. A lien is a claim to the property. So a mechanic's lien is another type of lien. For example, if you hire a roofer, let's say, to repair your roof three weeks before the closing and you don't pay that roofer, that roofer has a claim on, on your property called a lien and you've got to pay that off from the proceeds of the sale of your property, if not before closing. How do we know if there's a lien on your property? Well, the title company researches the property. The title company wants to make sure that you can transfer ownership as the seller to the buyer. They want to make sure you owned the property and now they own the property. They don't want any clouds on the ownership of the property, so they research that. They understand that surprises happen and they can't research everything. So they also issue title insurance. You might recall that from when you purchased your home. Title insurance ensures you uh, as a buyer when you buy the home, and it also ensures the lender against any sort of claims on the property. Typically, this isn't always the case, but it's almost always the case, the buyer ensures the lender against any claims on the property with title insurance, and the seller insures the buyer. So purchasing title insurance for the buyer is another expense. There may be others. Your homeowners association, there may be fees with them. For example, there could be an assessment that's due. You pay your monthly HOA dues, those will have to be paid as well. But say you live in a townhome community or another community and the pool is falling apart. And, and excuse me, the homeowners association decides we all need to chip in and fix the pool. And they decide that two weeks before you're supposed to close. Now, this is a negotiable item, but it's almost always the seller's responsibility to take care of any assessments before the property is sold. So if something like that were to happen, you'd also have to pay that before you could sell the property and transfer title. Any HOA dues, I mentioned those, will also have to be paid. There are taxes that have to be paid. In Colorado, your buyer will pay the taxes for the whole year. So say you live in the property six months of the year this year and the seller lives in, or the buyer, excuse me, lives in the property six months of the year. You owe the taxes for the portion of the year you lived in the property. So at closing, they'll take money from your proceeds and give that to the buyer so that the buyer can pay your taxes for those six months you lived there next year when the taxes come due. So you've got taxes, HOA 
dues or assessments. There's also HOA transfer fees, and there may be even a local transfer tax that's paid. So typically, not always, but almost always, the buyer or the seller, I'm sorry, the seller pays those transfer fees, whether they're taxes or HOA transfer fees. HOA transfer fees can be maybe four or $500. Typically the seller will pay those. You also have uh, the closing itself. In Colorado, almost all closings are handled by title companies. So they don't do that out of the goodness of their heart. We all sit there and sign documents and they kind of explain some of the documents and they print all those, they file documents with the county. There are fees involved with that as well. Typically, a lot of those fees are split 50-50 between the seller and the buyer. Um, so you'll pay some of that. Those aren't very expensive. Um, there may be other fees, concessions that you negotiate with the buyer. So maybe you're going to help them buy down their interest rate. That's an expense as well that you would, that it would come out of your proceeds at the closing and go to them. Finally, you have commissions to real estate agents like me. Those also come out of your proceeds at closing. Those vary. Um, we charge 1% to sell homes, other agents charge 3%. And the way real estate has evolved, sellers almost always pay the buyer agent commission as well as their own agent. There are a lot of reasons why it's evolved that way. Very simply, buyers don't have a lot of extra money. So they want to be represented, represented and really it helps a seller if a buyer is represented by a professional real estate agent as well. It makes things go much more smoothly. So you're paying them. When you work with us, we let you determine what you want to pay a buyer's agent. So let's say homes are selling really quickly. You don't feel you need to offer a really high commission. Maybe you're paying us a 1% commission and then you're paying the buyer's agent a 2.5% commission. So out of all of your proceeds, you pay 3.5% to both agents. And then you have, after all of those expenses, you have your proceeds, what you'll really walk away with. You have fees for closing, taxes and HOA fees and assessments. You have commissions. We have a worksheet. You can download it and fill it out, play with different scenarios, maybe figure out, oh, if we sold for this price, what what would we walk away with? Or if we sold for that price, what would we walk away with? The numbers can be complicated. If you need some help, contact me anytime and I can help you fill that out. My name's Tom Grant. I'm a real estate agent with the principal team at Metro Brokers. My contact information is in that guide. Download it now, get started. Don't hesitate to contact me anytime with questions. I'm happy to help. Thanks.